me again. Don't worry, you won't have to look at me for too long. Uh, I'm just here to let you know on camera for some reason that this isn't like just a regular Quick Carbon Podcast episode. This is a video that I was supposed to make a while back, like two months ago or so, when the yearly uh, mining output data updates came out for all of the various metals and minerals uh, for the year. There's a loud obnoxious motorcycle outside. See, this this is one of the joys of, uh, well, if I were actually home in Alaska, this would be one of the joys of being in Alaska, that uh, there, there are no such people. But anyways, uh, so now two months late, I finally will uh, give the updates and stuff on, you know, all the metal mining data. Now, instead of just a normal visual backdrop uh, for the podcast, for the one or two minutes we talk about each metal or mineral, I will actually have a, uh, a graph or a, a chart of their production over time on screen, uh, but that's going to be it. And since we're nearing the end of the month, uh, thank you to everyone who has uh, donated through either PayPal or Patreon this month. Uh, so off the top of my head that I can remember, thank you to Erwind, Amir, Mohammed, Hitch, Wallen, uh, Joseph, of course, as always. Uh, though technically he was at the end of last month. Joseph... Joseph floats around from month to month because he's, you know, he's a big bill dropper. So, absolutely deepest gratitude of thanks to all of you. Uh, if anybody else would like to join them, PayPal, Patreon links are down in the description below and in the pinned comments, as always. Uh, you guys absolutely uh, give more than YouTube ad revenue does. Uh, so, thank you, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, let's get this started. So, taking us down this long, long list. So, starting with gold. We've mentioned before in several podcast episodes, back when the gold-specific data first came out, that uh, gold now has uh, started dropping. 2019 gold production compared to 2018 gold production was lower over the course of 2018. 3,510 tons of gold were mined versus last year, 2019, only 3,460 tons of gold were mined. Before this, global gold production had been on an increase uh, since 2009, which was when it began reversing a decline of several years after hitting a temporary peak. So is this here uh, the actual peak peak? for gold uh maybe maybe not i did suspect it would probably end up in this area between 3500 and 4000 tons or mainly just in general i don't really see it uh if it goes up a bit again i don't see gold production going all that far above 4000 tons per year so global silver production peaked in 2015 Global gold production may have peaked in 2018. We need a few more years to pass uh, in order to actually determine that. So gold inventories uh, are currently at about 25 million ounces in storage, up from about 8 million just a few months ago, because uh, gold demand primarily uh, from jewelry collapsed completely when this whole... Uh, global health scenario, because that won't trigger the algorithm, uh, began that basically destroyed jewelry demand for the most part. And unlike silver, gold still has a huge amount of its uh, demand coming from jewelry production. But gold inventories were down to 8 million ounces in storage and down uh, from their height of about 40 million ounces in storage a number of years back. Uh, for a time period during which uh, gold supply was decently outpacing demand. However, in the uh, few years before 2018, that began to reverse, and uh, global gold production began to stall, or it began to uh, 
slow down at least, and so demand inevitably started to overtake supply, as it always does in the end. Now with silver, that, uh, that was a bit more drastic. Uh, silver inventories at their height were once uh, nearly 2 billion ounces in storage, and uh, now, as of uh, the previous Quick Carbon podcast episode, they were all the way down to 310 million ounces in storage. This coming from the supply deficit, uh, coming out of ever-increasing silver demand despite decreasing silver production after the peak in 2015, in which global silver production hit 893 million ounces. And the following year, 2016, it dropped a tiny bit to 892, 2017 down to 863, 2018 down to 848, and last year, 2019, down to 836. And based on the first few months of this year, uh, the production levels of these first few months, based on the production levels of the first few months of last year, it's looking like this year, 2020, might end up with only around 800 million ounces of silver mined. And silver demand has not been destroyed by the whole health crisis, uh, because although a lot of silver is used for jewelry, unlike gold, that's not its dominant uh, consumer item thing. Silver is uh, dominated industrially. Silver is used in electronics, uh, it's still somewhat used in photography, it's used in a lot of chemical stuff, it's used to make mirrors, and uh, its ever ballooning use now in these times is uh, solar panels, because every square meter of solar panel contains about a third of an ounce of silver. Copper! Good old-fashioned copper. Uh, copper is somewhat plateauing-ish. Uh, it might be peaking, but I really doubt it. There's there's capacity out there to push copper a bit higher, and uh, most expectations were for global copper production to peak around the 2030s or so. But for the past few years, it actually has been plateauing. Uh, it was climbing from 16.9 million tons per year up to 18.3 million tons mined per year, 18.5, 19.1. But then the plateauing began at 20.1, 20, uh, 20.4, and then last year down to a flat 20 again. So that's where copper production stands as of the moment. And uh, copper inventories have sort of gradually come down from the upper 1 millions, like close to 2 million tons in storage, down to around 1.2 million tons in storage. As obviously there there is a bit of a uh, a demand overshoot, uh, but we'll see how that all goes. Uh, platinum and well all the platinum group metals, their global production levels have been plateaued, undulating plateaus like fluctuating around decently in you know decent amounts up and down, but uh, they've been flat-ish for nearly a decade. Like for the last 10 years or so, for example, platinum production in just tons, uh, because the platinum group metals are much rarer than gold and silver, so in just tons, platinum production for the last 10 years or so was 115 tons, 183 tons, 183 tons, 147, 189, 191, 199, 190, and last year was 180. And palladium played out uh, basically the same way because the two of them are basically linked. Uh, palladium's uh, last several years have been 215 tons, 201, 203, 193, 216, 210, 225, 220, and most recently this last year, only 210. So, basically kind of plateaued for the last decade or so. And uh, this has led to a obvious demand overshoot, uh, which has drawn down their inventories. Uh, they are now down into uh, very low numbers, particularly for palladium, 
platinum inventories uh, have been drawn down from at their height. They were at 1.7 million ounces in storage. They have now been drawn down to about 152,000. Uh, palladium inventories at their heights were around that same amount as about 1.8 million, but they were drawn down uh, all the way now to only 27,000 ounces in storage. And this, of course, uh, as any of you who listen to the podcast know, has uh, been causing, you know, price record chattering, particularly for Palladium, uh, who before all this stuff started, uh, uh, Palladium was shattering its price records, and it got up to, I think, twenty-seven or $2,800 per ounce. Aluminum, technically bauxite, because bauxite ore is what's mined and what aluminum is extracted from, but for brevity's sake, aluminum. Aluminum production globally continues increasing, uh, going up over the last several years from 258 million tons mined up to 283, down to 245, back up to 293, down to 275, and then climbing for the last three years up to 309, 327, and last year getting all the way up to 370 million tons of aluminum mined. The increase in production globally has not actually been able to really keep up with demand, however, as uh, so many former third world nations uh, are now like quickly rising and, uh, you know, a lot of infrastructure and vehicles and stuff are being built. Uh, aluminum inventories many years back were at a great height of 6 million tons in storage and, uh, they are now down at around 1.5 or so. They had been all the way down below 1 million, but over the last uh, several months, because of everything that's been going on, aluminum demand has uh, been, you know, cut back a bit. So they've been able to build back up to about 1.5. Global lead production peaked in 2013 and has been declining since then. It peaked at about 5.49 million tons mined in that year, and uh, since then has decreased down through the uh, fours, down towards four and a half. Last year, uh, the end's number for the year was 4.63 million tons mined. And so as lead production has been decreasing, that's obviously caused global lead demand to overshoot it which has been drawing down on lead inventories, which uh, before the peak had been built up to about 400,000 tons in storage, and now are down at only around 75,000 tons in storage. Global nickel production is climbing, sort of, uh, on the very long trend, uh, but in ref in reference to the last decade or so, it's it's kind of been more wobbly, going from 2.22 million tons of nickel mined over the course of the year, up to 2.63, 2.45, 2.28, 2.09, uh, 2.16, up to 2.4, and last year up to 2.7 million tons of nickel mined. Now, already in high demand, uh, for making various types of steel, uh, particularly steel for ships and water infrastructure, because nickel is the best at resisting saltwater corrosion. Nickel also has a surging demand from electric vehicle batteries, because despite being called lithium ion batteries, uh, the batteries by their weight are mostly nickel and manganese and graphite. But obviously, nickel wobbling around uh, has caused it uh, to have some, you know, supply deficit problems. And it has dropped from a height of, I believe it was about 600,000 tons in storage, all the way down, all the way down eventually to uh, 50,000 tons in storage or so. But uh, then, you know, all this stuff happened in the last few months or so. And... Uh, a lot of demand for a lot of stuff has, you know, cut back, and so nickel inventories have actually surged back up to about 230,000 tons in storage. Zinc production globally is kind of on a plateau. 
Uh, it, it might continue increasing hereafter, uh, but it's kind of been on a wobbly plateau at uh, 12.8 million tons mined. Then the year after that, 13.5, 13.4, 13.3, 12.8, 12.6, 12.5, 12.5, .5, and last year, 13 million tons again. Now, what pattern class does this wobbly plateau always end with? Demand overshoot. And overshoot, demand has 1 million tons in storage was zinc's height years back in the early 2010s and uh, it had dropped all the way down to 60,000 tons in storage before all this uh, medical issue stuff began recently and cut back a lot of demand in a lot of economies and because of that it has been able to uh, bump back up over the last three months or so up to 107,000 tons in storage uh, tin production is actually increasing a little bit on the wobbly side tin production uh, from tin mines has increased from about 240,000 tons per year uh, several years back up to 310,000 tons per year last year granted the year before that 2018 it was 318,000 tons and tin is likely to peak soon because total in-ground reserves and resources have been constantly getting downgraded uh, as, as it's been getting mined over the years. Tin is actually not as abundant as people think. Iron, the true good old-fashioned metal. Old-fashioned iron. Uh, iron peaked, sort of. Um, not really like a actual production peak. It got up to a great height and then took an abrupt drop, but has been climbing ever since that drop. Uh, that drop occurred several years back when iron production hit 3.42 billion tons per year. And then it dropped next year down to 2.28. And since then, over the last few years, has climbed back up to 2.5 billion tons. And iron supply, iron production is... It's one of the, the few things we won't ever really have to worry about. Chromium, another critical steel alloying material for various types of stainless steel. Very good at resisting freshwater corrosion. Global chromium production is increasing still. Climbing over the last uh, seven or eight years or so from 28.8 million tons mined per year up to last year 44 million tons mined so chromium's going good we don't have to worry about chromium yet manganese is also increasing manganese being the under recognized under respected uh second key ingredient of steel iron is the foundational material and then the two key ingredients after that are carbon which everyone knows about but also manganese all steel contains manganese, but nobody ever recognizes poor manganese. So, give manganese some recognition. Manganese production from manganese mines around the world is increasing. Over the last decade or so, it has climbed from 13.9 million tons per year up to 19 million tons mined per year in 2019, ironically. Titanium production is... a uh, increasing sort of or maybe not uh, it's it's been wobbling around for the last decade from anywhere between 137 and 210 thousand tons per year it's it's been wobbling up and down from year to year so titanium doesn't really fit in a peaked or not peaked category we we throw it into what i just designated as the unambiguously ambiguous category a category that molybdenum also finds itself in uh, molybdenum uh, technically you can say it's it's climbing in the long run uh, but it's it's doing it really awkwardly uh, but it it has it has managed trend wise to go from 259,000 tons per year 
uh, about a decade ago up to 290,000 tons per year last year, though the year before that it was 297, and in the middle of all that it plunged down to 235 one year, but you know that's beside the point. Tungsten uh, may have peaked, kind of, or, or it might be plateauing. It hit a high point about five years ago at 89.4 thousand tons mined uh, over the course of that year. And uh, after that, it dropped down to 88.1, 82.1, 81one However, last year, 2019, it went back up to 85,000 tons. So it uh, might have been a one-time thing. It might be plateauing. It might have actually peaked, and that 85 might be a single-time re-uptick. So we need a few more years to figure that out. And beginning to get away from uh, specifically metals and starting to get into some minerals and metals, uh, talc, one of the uh, key ingredients of many things. We need it as filler to make rubber. We need it to make paper. We need it to make white paint. We need it for foot powder. And we need it for most ceramic like your toilet seat and your sink and whatnot. That's usually a kiln-fired mixture of clay and talc. Talc production uh, has been declining. It hit a height of 8.4 million tons per year, and uh, then it started dropping down to 7.9, 7.27, and both of the last years have been 6.6. .6. However, Talc reserves and resources globally are so monumentally vast that I would more than likely chalk those numbers up to uh, fluctuations in demand because it has shown similar patterns over its history in the past. Fluor spar production, the mineral from which we extract fluorine or fluoride, which we use to make your toothpaste, though that's a tiny percent of its consumption. Most of it we use to make glass and steel and uh, a various number of chemicals, the most important of which is refrigerant or cooling fluid, which allows us to have AC, air conditioning, climate control systems, refrigerators, uh, medical preservation stuff, and many of the wonders of modern society. Fluor spar production, uh, tends to more fluctuate in sort of an ebb and flow demand response. Floor spar production, for example, over the last uh, decade or so has uh, gone from 7.52 million tons per year mined down to 7.07, 6.77, 6.39, back up to 6.67, down to 5.39, 5.68, back up to 6.72, and last year back up to 7 million tons mined. Cobalt, another one of those uh, critical materials for electric vehicle batteries, and actually a lot of other batteries. Also, uh, a critical alloying component for nickel super alloys used for turbines and for jet engines and things. Cobalt production is increasing. Over the last decade or so, it has gone up from 109,000 tons per year up to 140,000 tons last year. Granted, the year before that was 148. Lithium production uh, is on the rise, except for this last year. It took a sudden drop, uh, but it climbed from 34,000 tons per year up to 95,000 tons per year in 2018. And uh, then this last year, 2019, it dropped down to only about 77,000 tons, but that's probably a one-time thing. And, uh, yeah, there's... there's plenty of lithium for a while especially in that you know 100 mile wide like four meter deep lithium salt brine lake up in the andes mountains rare earths uh not one in particular this is just all rare earths together rare earth production has continued increasing over the last decade or so climbing from 111,000 tons per year up to 210,000 tons per year last year. Most of that's uh, nearly 90% all coming uh, from China, 
basically a similar scenario to what we refer to as the South Africa problem. With rare earths, it's the Southern China problem. At least I think it's in the South. It might be in the North, don't quote me. Granted, there are large uh, potential reserves of rare earths elsewhere in the world, uh, like in the Western U.S., for example, in uh, Southern and Central Somalia, in Afghanistan. Uh, so, I mean, the latter two can pose some problems, but uh, you don't have to do the whole single country reliance thing, but the world seems to like that. Industrial grade sand, aka the thing we use to make concrete. Industrial grade sand mining has uh, gradually been increasing as, again, the uh, former third world keeps rising and a whole bunch of modern infrastructure keeps getting built. So, uh, industrial grade sand production globally has climbed over the last decade from 890 million tons of sand mined, industrial grade sand that is, not any sand, just industrial grade sand, up to last year 1.3 billion tons of industrial grade sand mined. And potash, uh, the mineral from which we get potassium, which primarily we use to make uh, our potassium fertilizer, uh, to throw along with our phosphate fertilizer, to fertilize our plants, and, uh, you know, help us grow as many crops as we do, as quickly as we do, to feed the gargantuan population size that we have. Now, whereas uh, you can thank Morocco for the world's, or at least in the future you'll be thanking Morocco for the world's phosphate supply, you can thank Pakistan for the world's potash supply. Global potash mining has increased over the last decade or so from 36.4 million tons per year mined up to 43.3 uh, million tons mined in 2018. Last year actually it fell down a bit down to 41 but it is almost certainly going to resume climbing again. Global yttrium production. Yttrium is one of the rare earth metals uh, one in which we particularly need to make LED lights, along with the tiny little nanoscopic uh, light wave gates of a sort in LCD and LED screens, because an LED screen is still an LCD screen, it's just using LEDs as the backlight. Yttrium production uh, was kind of flat and plateau-y for a while, but uh, as China has cranked up rare earth mining, uh, yttrium production has obviously then risen in the last several years, but many years ago it was holding at around uh, nine or so thousand tons per year, then it dropped down towards seven. However, in the last couple of years, it has floored it up to 14,000 tons per year. Gallium production, measured only in tons, uh, has been overall decreasing. Gallium has potentially peaked. It peaked up at 440 tons uh, in the early 2010s, and although it's had some ups again, as of now it is down to 320 tons. Gallium also uh, being needed for LEDs. Indium, another rare earth metal, the critical component of indium tin oxide, which is a uh, what allows touchscreens to exist and what allows and what allows LCD screens to exist. Indium production has been in a wobbly plateau over the last decade or so. Measured only in tons, it's fluctuated from 662 as high as 844. And last year it came in at 760 tons mined worldwide. Antimony uh, antimony production has peaked, antimony reserves and resources are dropping fast uh, every couple of years when they're adjusted. Antimony demand was dropping, but now it's climbing again, uh, as antimony's primary uses were in ammunition, because bullets are not just pure lead, uh, they're lead with a mixture of antimony and copper usually. Vehicle batteries or lead acid batteries, as the lead grids in those are also not just pure lead, they're a mixture of antimony, usually about 6%, and flame retardant material 
However, that use is dying out. However, that use uh, now is uh, beginning to be replaced and outshone by demand for infrared cameras and heat sensors, which use antimony as one of their critical materials. But antimony production globally peaked and has been falling. Over the last dozen years or so, it's fallen from about 199,000 tons per year, uh, dropping as low as 137 at one point. However, over the past couple of years, it's climbed back up to 160. Beryllium, a very rare metal and a very critical metal also uh, for high efficiency, high functioning, non-corroding spark plugs i.e. the type uh, that are used in aircraft and military applications. Beryllium production, measured only in tons, uh, has been sort of fluctuating around from 250 to 260, 290, 230, 220, 210, but then coming back up 240, and last year 260 tons mined. Phosphate rock, the mineral that feeds us all. We already mentioned it uh, in the potash segment a few minutes ago. Uh, global phosphate production is thankfully still increasing overall on, on the long term. Over the last few years, it's been dropping, however. But long term, uh, it's come up from 181 up to 269 million tons mined over the course of the year. However, the last two years, it has dropped down to 249 and last year down to 240. So phosphate is uh, going to be one of the big players in our resource troubled future niobium one of the uh, critical alloying components for a really super high strength steel the type of steel you'll find in construction equipment military projectiles missiles and the like and all uh, and also in the various super alloys used in turbines and engines niobium production was stalling for a little bit but it has resumed increasing going from a low of 50.1 thousand tons per year up to now, this last year, 74 thousand tons mined. Vanadium, another steel alloy ingredient for high impact strength steel, so used in tools a lot. Vanadium production has potentially peaked uh, at 82.7 thousand tons and since then has uh, declined down to 71.2. Granted, uh, last year it came back up uh, for one year, up to 73,000. But it's looking like it has possibly peaked. Cadmium, uh, basically critical for uh, cadmium control rods in nuclear reactors and for nickel cadmium batteries. Cadmium production, very, very long term, is technically increasing. Uh, but very slowly, but really slow, uh, going from about 19 or 18 thousand tons per year a while back, about a decade ago, up to now finally 25 thousand tons per year last year. Arsenic, primarily known as a poison, uh, but actually a very critical material for doping in processors for computers, and as a minor, like 2% alloying component for the grids in lead-acid batteries. Arsenic production has peaked and is in terminal decline and uh, has declined all the way from 55.9 thousand tons per year all the way down to only 33 as of last year. Tantalum mined alongside cobalt in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, tantalum is much rarer, however, uh, but just as critical, it is needed for, you know, microcapacitors inside of computers and phones and the like. And long term, its production has been increasing. It was uh, wobbling around a bit flat for a while, uh, but it resumed an actual upward trend uh, several years back in the early 2010s. And since then has climbed from 1170 tons per year up to 1800 tons per year. Granted, the year before last year, it was just under 1,900 tons. Clay, global clay production, technically long-term, it's, it's been increasing, sort of, uh, but it also wobbles around based on demand. 
Its primary demand, of course, coming from, you know, making ceramic uh, as, you know, the primary ingredient is clay. And then depending on what type you're making, you add something else like talc or kyanite. Technically climbing still long term uh, over the last decade or so, it's come up from 45.8 million tons per year up to 63.8. Kyanite, a mineral uh, often used in ceramics, uh, however, also often used as a uh, caking material uh, for the inside of furnaces or for basically protecting anything uh, that's, you know, going to be enduring a lot of heat. As kyanite itself is uh, extremely non-conductive, non-heat conductive, that is. Uh, kyanite fluctuates around, uh, basically, it, it fluctuates based on demand. And over the last decade or so, it's fluctuated anywhere from 350,000 tons mined over the course of the year to as high as 464. Uh, last year in particular, it was 405. Soda ash, or sodium carbonate, production is increasing. Soda ash is used to make glass. It's used uh, as a flux material to help make steel. And uh, tiny minor amounts of it are used as a, uh, as a pet deodorizer. And most soda ash that's mined, at least, uh, is mined in the U.S. Uh, particularly, it's basically it's all coming out of Wyoming. And over the past uh, decade or so, global soda ash production has increased from 11.1 up to 16 million tons per year. Feldspar, a mineral or rock type that we use to make various types of paint, however, uh, a larger portion of which we use to make drywall. Feldspar production is, uh, trend-wise, it is increasing but it does fluctuate with demand globally. But uh, over the last decade or so, it's gone up from 20.6 up to 26 million tons per year. Bismuth, a very heavy element. Uh, however, unlike lead, a non-toxic one. So in a lot of uh, weighted materials, bismuth is beginning to replace lead at the request of many governments. Uh, also a key ingredient of numerous medicines. Global bismuth production has been increasing over time. Over the last decade or so, it has come up from 8.2 up to 19,000 tons per year. Global salt production. Salt, uh, contrary to what most people assume, uh, the majority of our salt supply we actually mine because it's, it's faster, easier, and cheaper than uh, desalination operations. So uh, we mine a lot of salt. And global salt production is uh, not increasing, not decreasing either. It's, it's kind of a wobbly plateau. So over the last decade or so, global salt production from mining has fluctuated in the upper 200s, you know, between 250 and 300 million tons per year. Zirconium used uh, for control rods in nuclear reactors, uh, used in some computer processors, and also widely used to make fake jewelry. Global zirconium production has kind of just been on a wobbly plateau, sort of fluctuates with demand basically. So it's been going anywhere from 1.16 up to 1.62 million tons per year. This last year it came in at 1.4. Limestone which we mine uh, to use as decoration, to use as uh, ground up construction material. Primarily, uh, we use it to make cement. However, we also use it to uh, extract lime itself and use the lime material uh, in, as flux in the steel making process. Global limestone production has increased over time from 296 million tons per year about a decade back up to 430 million tons per year last year. Rhenium, a particular metal that is uh, very critical for the special alloys used in aircraft engines and in power turbines. Global rhenium production 
uh, has been kind of on a wobbly plateau, fluctuating between 45-ish and 56 or so tons per year. As it's only measured in tons, it's, uh, it's pretty rare. This last year in particular, it came in at 49 tons. Germanium, also measured only in tons, has peaked, maybe. Uh, it might be in a fluctuation process, though. Uh, it hit a height about uh, seven years back, eight years back, of 165 tons mined in that year, and fell down to 116 three years ago. However, for the last two years, it's been back up at 130. Tellurium, a very rare metal, uh, its production has been increasing. Tellurium is uh, critical for high efficiency solar panels, the ones that everybody's after. They get like over 30% of the sunlight. Tellurium production uh, has climbed from 261 tons per year all the way up to 470. And uh, then it fell to 460 two years ago, but then last year it was back up to 470 again. Selenium, which is not just for your shampoo, it is uh, used in all kinds of different metal alloys across the board. It is actually a much rarer metal than people think it is. Uh, its production has sort of been increasing. It uh, hit a temporary possible peak. That potential temporary peak was at 3,270 tons. And uh, as of last year, it was at 2,800 tons mined that year. And finally, stone. Just generic old stone. Not specific types of minerals or stones. Just generic stone. Dig up all the rock, just grind it up. Uh, used for filler in, you know, concrete and construction and everything. Used as gravel to spread on ice roads in the winter. Global stone mining. Uh, technically, it's increased over time, although it wobbles based on yearly demand changes. But over time, it overall has been increasing because, again, a lot more infrastructure is being built because a lot of the third, because a lot of the third world nations are rising up. Uh, so. It has climbed from about 1.16 a decade ago or so up to, last year, 1.53 billion tons of stone mined. Try to beat that in your Minecraft server. All right, that's it for me, guys. Sorry for this long-winded list off of all this stuff. Unless you enjoyed it, uh, then I'm glad you enjoyed it. If you did, you know, like the video and everything, subscribe if you haven't blah 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 uh subscribe to my other channel that's where i post like travel adventures and stuff from you know back when i was able to travel if you want to support me support the podcast or help me afford to exist uh paypal or patreon you can send through either one patreon's a monthly thing paypal is just obviously you know right now whenever you want however much you want both of those are in the description below along with the link to my other channel Thank you, everybody, for being here. May God bless every one of you, and I will see you all around next time.